call to order the uh, Springfield Board of Education meeting for Thursday, February 7th, 2019. Uh, roll call. Here. 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 Yes. Right. Moving on to A1.3, approval of the January 8th, 2019 meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Yes. All right, we'll move on to uh, 2.1, our student success and action. Mr. Craig. Mr. President, thank you. We have, in every building, exciting things happening. And tonight, we're going to introduce something that just happened in the last week or two at Springboro High School. We're going to introduce tonight's program, the best high school principal in Ohio. Right, ladies? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schreier. I was paying attention, I promise. This is one of the work of Thanks for having us, having high school and some of our students here. Uh, just to give a, a short, brief entry, uh, and then we're going to allow uh, our two teachers to speak a little bit about the program and our students. Um, this is part of our AP Capstone Program Diploma Group. As you know, we started this year with our first year, so we have our first class, which is AP Seminar. Uh, next year, we'll be adding in our the second class for that uh, diploma, which is AP Research. Uh, so tonight we have about half of our AP seminar class here to talk about the experience, uh, the first project, our task that they completed. Um, so it's been a great addition to our, our program of studies uh, and to our building. And it's been a, a, a joy for, for myself to watch the students uh, grow and progress through the class. I was able to watch their first uh, task presentations last week or two weeks ago in the uh, auditorium, which they did a phenomenal job. So to talk a little bit more about the class, uh, the task of the students, I'm going to introduce Mrs. Dobbin and Mr. Well. All right, so I'm going to kind of just talk a little bit about uh, getting started with the program. You said AP Capstone uh, is a, a two-year program, AP Seminar, AP Research. This was created, it's a fairly new program, it was created about maybe four or five years ago that it started. And with the, um, the college board kind of working with universities to create a program that would help students be what universities wanted once they got into the um, so this summer, Ms. Llewellyn and I um, traveled to Baltimore for a week, um, and that brings up a whole lot of stories, but we traveled to Baltimore for a week um, because the uh, workshops are absolutely required. Before we, can, we actually have to get approved, and I believe Ms. Cook um, was kind of instrumental in getting this program approved. You have to be approved. Everything else, all the other AP classes, you say you want to teach, you're good to go. Um, no training is required, but this is very unique in that we, get, we apply for it. Um, I think we're one of 44 high schools in the state of Ohio that have been approved for it. Um, and then we have to take training, and we'll be off this summer again to take training to teach AP research. Um, it's a very unique program because it doesn't have, per se, a curriculum, but it has certain skills that the students are supposed to learn. Um, like, I teach AP government, and I have a very strict curriculum about what I'm supposed to go over, um, and we have a lot of flexibility and freedom to kind of use whatever resources we want, whatever materials we have, which to some extent sounds good, but it also is very difficult because there's a lot of different stuff out there. Um, so we start off with um, kind of teaching some skills. Ultimately, um, we're really focusing on credibility, reliability of sources, something that's really missing today in the world. Um, you know, finding evidence, creating an argument and having evidence to back that up. Um, there's a written component in their, their task one, they actually have three tasks they do that, that there is their AP score. Um, most AP courses you take an end of course exam in May, and that you get a one, two, three, or four, or five. Um, these students 
students have to complete three different tasks. All of them, or two of them, and three involve writing, two of them also involve presentation. So not only are they learning to research, use analytical skills, use evidence to create arguments, but they're also uh, working together in teams and then uh, making presentations uh, before whoever we happen to invite. And we invited Mr. Schreyer, but we got laid, laid way late with some of those snow days and um, parties. That's okay, that's all right. It was great anyway, wasn't it? Okay. Um, so, so really this is about them taking, uh, really to having some individual preference on what they would like to research or to look up. So we give them a theme, they kind of jump from there and figure out what they want to do. Um, and task one involves uh, writing an individual research paper and then coming together in a group and synthesizing that material to present a team presentation, a team media presentation. Um, the one brochure you have has a picture of uh, some of the presentations. We did it in the auditorium, so the kids were on the stage. Um, and you know, for, for all of us trying to learn and figure out how this is, they did a wonderful job. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. We're gonna have, do we wanna do the task first? Talk about the task. I think Jenna and Grace wanna talk about what we okay. did early on in the year and then you guys will talk about task. Okay, so um, Jenna Ashdown's gonna talk, well, I'll let you say what you're gonna talk about. We do have, um, we have uh, three of the girls here, they work together as a team to do one of the presentations. So they'll actually talk about that component and then we have um, two of the other girls kind of talking about things that they're learning in, um, as they work through this program. Okay.
they're being modest. They, they pick up in the sense that they were learning as they were going. And we were learning as well because, as Mrs. Dauber said, this is a class where we don't have a set curriculum. So we are learning as a group, and that's part of the exciting and also sometimes the frustrating process. But we had everything from human trafficking to sleep deprivation and kind of everything in between. And I'm going to talk quickly about the next task for me, but before I say that, the, the most frustrating part, especially coming from an English teacher's perspective, to come on that idea of perspective and lenses, we are not allowed to give them specific feedback on their work. So in our training this summer, they said you're going to have um, welts on your tongue from having to bite your tongue so many times. Um, we taught them at the beginning of the year that if we're seeing a problem on one student's paper that we'll say something like, hey, we're noticing, we need to do a mini lesson on, and then everyone needs to look at their paper. So they've had to really work together as a team, our entire class, to help each other out um, because we can't provide that specific feedback. So we have to do a lot of practice and a lot of peer editing and a lot of things that will allow for them to become better ultimately um, in the long run. So that was task one. Task two, we started this, well, last week. Um, we gave them the materials before we were out for a few days and we've been working on it all this week. They received seven what are called stimulus materials that are given by AP College Board. And they all will have a very loose common thread throughout them, which is what we're trying to figure out right now. But they have analyzed the materials and they range from scientific journals to pieces of art to short stories. And um, right now we're in the process of analyzing that because ultimately they will take the idea that comes from these materials and they will be doing their next research component. And this will be an individual written response and an individual presentation. And then they will have their May AP exam like all the other AP classes. So those are their, uh, their three, although technically there are five different scores. They have an individual and a team presentation for the first task, individual written, individual presentation for the second task, and then their AP test in May. And next year, basically it is individual research the whole year. It would be almost like a mini dissertation and a TED talk that they'll be doing. So we're building toward that. But based on task one, they're in good shape. So we've been super proud of our group. Today we did a Socratic seminar and I mean, I do them a lot in English class, but I was so impressed with this group today. I thought they did such a great job. So we're, we're blessed to have a great group and we've really learned a lot this year. Anything anybody else wants to add? No presentation component for 
that AP test, for the, the May test. What an amazing opportunity for you guys to be able to turn this into so incredibly preparing you for the next step in life. So thank you guys for taking this on. Congratulations, you did great. I was just going to ask uh, how you found, because uh, you know, we talked about there's a little less structure uh, to this than probably what you're used to. I guess how has that transition or how has the experience been in a, a non-traditional uh, sort of class setting where you're following a traditional curriculum? Has that been a big adjustment? Has it been presented a big challenge? Um, well, I must say when we first started, and you know, we had to kind of figure this out on our own.
Item 2.3, the Class Body Employees Association report. Item 2.4, I do not believe we have any prearranged public participation. So we'll move to item 2.5, any public participation on the items and agenda items. I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for supporting Step Fest. I know it's further down the agenda, but I want to thank you guys for partnering with us and um, seeing how great this event can be and sponsoring us. So I just want to say but thank you. Thank you for your work and for your Um, they have uh, 28 students that are interested in playing tennis at the uh, first informational meeting. Uh, this is consistent with the numbers they had last year. Uh, they were only able to have a varsity and JV team. However, the girls program has three teams. With having two teams, Coach Holtry would have to cut 15 to 16 kids. So Austin's proposal is to add a team and a coach. Uh, math adds up to 60 kids times $260 pay to play fee gives you $4,160. Adding an assistant would be $1,849 plus retirement cost. Uh, they did the same thing this past year with the boys golf when the numbers necessitated adding a team instead of cutting players. Any questions? Mr. Pinnell, keep rolling. Okay. The next one is a huge problem. Uh, I'm sorry for me um, way back when when we started the process with Clear Creek uh, you know we got the stuff going we had the discussion about the building we had the discussion about um, everything that would need to be done in order to move along with that and um, one of the things that uh, if, if you remember way back to 15 2015 for those of you who are on the board when we put the, the, the permanent modular in we also had to add a breezeway. We had to add that connector um, to, for safety and security, as well as keeping everybody dry, everything else. So it's, a, it's one of the necessities you have to do if you're gonna make this a long-term solution. So when we, when we had the board vote on and approve the, the modular itself was what the lease purchase was, then I also, we knew we had to do a connector. And so one of the things that I had to do was then go look at based on with the position of the new modular and where the doors are and everything else that was gonna come, how are we gonna to have to do that? The modular that we did back in 2015, it was about $90,000 for that connector that was there. This connector is four times longer than that one. So adding it in under the same type of scenario with the glass, as well as the location of this modular, permanent modular on that side of the building, to have an all glass enclosure would have created too much heat, all that. Also code required because it was such a long connector that we have some sort of HVAC in this unit, which we didn't have to have in the one that was so close. So looking at all those things, we decided that we would just purchase the modular, have it included so it was all part of this. They brick it up just like they're doing with the permanent modular that they, that's there that you all approved and then we would approve a change to them of the $224,600. And unfortunately, my problem is we talked about this in a couple meetings, but I never brought it to you for approval. And I thought we did. Actually, all three of us thought we did until it came down to push to shove and then we went back and looked and there's nothing in, in anything that, that approves it. So that's what's on the approval tonight. That, and then there's an electrical change order um, that we had to do because when we brought it in, there was some additional electric that had to be done because we were dropping um, the transformer where we did um, from Duke, because Duke determines the transformer and where they decided to place it, determined that there was about, uh, what, a, about $9,000 approximately in additional electrical work that would have been required. So that's what that second change order is. Let me make sure I understand on the first one. If I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, that the amount for the connector was always contemplated and included in the budget. Correct. That That's part of, yes. Right. About $1.2 million approximately. The administrative step of bringing it to the board. Correct. To approve. So and that's my fault. 
this particular project, there's no overrun no. or additional spending than what was set aside and budgeted for this particular. Correct. And when you do the per square footage with this connector compared to the connector we did with the other, it's about a fourth of the cost per square foot. So it's a much better value and it's and it's bricked up just like everything else, it's being done at the same time. So it actually ended up being a better completion than any other possible things that we could have done. But this particular item itself is not creating a It's yeah, it's well, nothing it wasn't anything a surprise. Yeah. We all were expecting this. We knew it was going to happen because we have to. We had to have it there. Uh, one of the other positives for anybody that's that's related to this in the in the um, in Clear Creek and with the preschool is because of the way we do, we're doing it also, we're able to almost double the size of their playground. So we'll be able to put those swings that they've been asking for for the last three years. Once we get the construction done, we get everything graded, we can put those swings in that they need because we're gonna have the fence go to the edge of the building. And that'll allow them to, to be nice, safe, and secure. And they've got, um, you know, once we get everything done, we'll determine where we wanna put a walkway for for ingress and egress out of there for parent pickup and drop off, that's a little more safe than where they they have tried to do it now, which is all the way out front. And all. Correct. So can I can I ask a question just to understand what what you were saying, Jamie? With the 1.2, we previously voted on like one point something else. Correct, there's probably, there's about a million dollars that was in the lease purchase part. And then we knew there was always going to be the addition of the connect. And I should have brought that back right away and I just, I just forgot. Okay, so you told this is what the total amount will be. Correct. And a smaller amount and this is the difference. Correct. That would have given what the total amount Correct, be. right. All right, my summer project updates. Things are in full swing. Our copy RFQ, which is a five-year uh, copier commitment that we do, um, it is out right now. I've met with um, four of the, of the vendors that I sent it to. I've got five more meetings scheduled in the next week and a half. Um, so I'm meeting with all the copy companies and they're due in uh, somewhere around the end of the month and then we'll, we'll have to look at that and, determine how we're, what we're going to do with the copiers. So that's out there. I've also met with four different of the custodial supply companies about paper products. Every three years, we, re, we get a contract, or not a contract, it just depends on the company, um, for paper towels, toilet paper, soap. The rest of the stuff, we don't go with a single company. I allow the buildings to have a little bit of say. Then custodians can pick some of the things. Um, but it, it keeps a good track on everybody has the same toilet paper, everybody has the same paper towels, everybody has the same soap. And it's a lot of money, so it's up to something to keep track of. It's one of those joys of, of uh, my job that I get to deal with. And, and meeting with uh, custodial supply companies is always so much fun. Um, we've got uh, we, our fire monitoring contract is out. Right now we've got A1. Um, we've had them for two and a half years now. We're happy with what they're doing and with their with their response time and all. So we're probably going to just uh, enter into another agreement with them, um, short-term or long-term, and we'll get with that. Um, our HVAC contract with Peck Hannaford Briggs, which is for preventative maintenance, and then also uh, we have an individual that's here for brake fix um, as needed. Um, and so that one is up in October. So sometime probably within the next month or two, that will be hitting the streets so that we can get some, um, some responses back from that. Uh, I try to keep that as a three-year contract also. I don't like five-year contracts. I have to do that on the copiers because if not, it's, it's too, uh, too much money. Uh, we'll be coming back to you again fairly soon with some to get the approval to get uh, started on a bid process for another hundred thousand dollars of windows that we need to do here at the high school um, the uh, you know these weren't done in this backside but the the difference with these windows in and on this side and then on the east side are just night and day um, we are going to have to have some some paving done um, I don't you can you know the 
The heating and cooling does wonderful things to paving. We have a lot of potholes that are popping up really bad. Um, anybody that tries to come in or out of the place knows that. Um, so we'll be getting that together. I've been meeting with a company that um, uses um, a process so that we don't have to do a formal bid process because they do, you know, they've got a, a cooperative that they use. Um, so we're trying to get a look at that to see if that'll save us money rather than having to, to bid it out because sometimes bidding it out, it slows it down so long. And then probably um, we're looking at <coughs> purchasing another maintenance pickup truck. I've got um, one maintenance pickup truck that's I think on its last leg. So we're going to be looking at that. We also have a box truck that um, is kind of scary. We don't let it get out of the district now. So we're trying to figure out how to marry all our needs with the limited funds that we have. Um, the other contract that will need to be redone this summer also is our Pepsi contract. Our Pepsi contract is up July 1. So that's another one that I'll be starting on here fairly soon. Anybody have any questions? How much more do we have to go on high school for the windows? I can't remember how long the process that was going to be. Doing. Well, I've got, if I, if I continue with $100,000 a year, I'm going to have four more years. Because I was really hoping to be able to get all of these windows done with the 100000 for this, this side. But I did all the, the library windows, there, that's almost probably 80 grand alone for that window so it adds an extra year onto it but with the other sides I, I should be able to get those done with the three years of 100,000 and then this is the fourth year how are you with the other buildings well uh, really you know Clear Creek we redid with the project that we did back in fifth, uh, 15 um, so Clear Creek's really good of course the the Dennis five points are good um, SI needs some work. That would be our next building that would need work. That's probably another couple hundred thousand dollars worth of windows there um, just to replace what's there. Um, you know, if we want to do it right, really what should happen is some of those windows and the insulated, you know, because they, they used to have really big windows and they made them small because that was how they became energy efficient 20, 30 years ago. And um, it would probably be better to take that whole thing out and actually put in double double sets of windows rather than just a single set that's in most of those because you know one of the things that they're concerned about on that second floor SI is getting out if there's a fire or whatever you know uh, can I get out the front well even if you could even if we got ladders or we got something else you can't open those windows for enough for an average sized person to get out you know you might be able to get half of the sixth graders out there but the an average sized person can't get out those windows. They don't open far enough. And it's and all you've got is one. So those are things that we'll have to look at as we go along with SI. But SI is the other one that really needs windows. Do we have that in the Yes. Correct. Thank you. 
also had um, <clears throat> the mental health uh, department, uh, our department, Wendy Ford, um, come in, and her team of resource coordinators, and then they spoke about um, their position and their roles, how they work with schools, how they work with um, students.
4 is the approval of items 4.1 through 4.3. Is there a motion to approve? Sorry. Any discussion? Yeah, I just have one thing. At what point, if we, um, I'm, I'm continuing to hear that, um, that there might be some need for some additional technology to there being question or ask for some additional funding. And if that's something we as a board want to take on the burden of so that the PTOs are able to do other things, at what point would that decision be made as we're looking at the five year? Like, if, would that be in May? Like, when we redo? Yeah, we could absolutely do it in May. Um, I know they need to be for May, and then I would just show the effects. If we as a board feel that that's something that we could potentially figure out a way to do, if they're coming to PTOs, if there really is that need, because we are you know, utilizing a lot more technology, and I support that, I mean, I think that there's times I've seen the benefits in my own family of how they're using it to differentiate instruction, and I don't want technology to be a barrier for the educational value, but I also don't want I feel like that's our job as a board to cover that when that's not the extra. So I want principals to know if that's something that if we can figure out a way to afford this, I'm just not sure how to have that, when to have that discussion. I do. Um, I think the first thing that we would do in that case is start back with John or depending on if it's John or Andrea, depending on what it is that their needs are, because we are consistently under budget in certain areas and it's because no one's asking. So I think those requests need to be made first to see if we actually have the funds already set aside before we then do those policy and have the funds set aside. It's just no one's asking. So I haven't heard any requests or any additional requests being asked. So that might be a good start there, and okay. then we can see what, what those needs are. Item 4.6, approval of the donation of $500 from the city of Springboro for STEM Fest. Uh, item 4.7 is an approval of the donation of $200 from Ages Flooring for STEM Fest. Item 4.8, approval of the donation of $300 from People's Bank for personal hygiene supplies for clinics. Uh, approval of the donation of a Casio digital piano and stand valued at $360 from Charlene Kunderka, apologies if I can't pronounce that. Uh, 4.10, approval of donation of $100 from Bertrand and Sandra Ray for the Ralph E. Wade Scholarship Fund. Finally, uh, or I guess there's two more. 4.11, uh, approval of donation of $1,982.32 from the Clear Creek PTO for a laminator. Now finally, 4.12, approval of Car Club as a student activity. Item 4.13 asks for approval of items 4.6 through 4.12. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Any discussion on any of those? Yes. 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 
luck. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move into human resources 5.1 approval of the uh, personnel. Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President, members of the board, for your consideration tonight, we've got 5.1, which is our normal personnel report. Uh, we have two sort of two resignations, uh, an employee of a custodian, some employment of custodian substitute uh, personnel, um, employment of an interim CO receptionist because our receptionist is going on maternity leave, um, and then uh, we've got. Uh, uh, an adjustment of some personnel items, a supplemental person, and then some leaves of absence. Um, 5.2 for your consideration is the uh, high school summer school program that was presented the other day by uh, Mr. Myers. 5.3 is a recommendation for uh, an administrative contract for Brooke Coulter to be the um, principal at the intermediate school. Yay! Yay! Of the board for your consideration is the athletic personnel report. Um, these are all supplemental positions um, as normal for this time of year. Is there a motion to approve 5.5? Second. Okay. Discussion? I just can I still get, I would like to see that list of who are like the different sports and the number of coaches and the number of. Um, Thank you. Good evening, board president and members of the board. Uh, as you know, we were we needed to replace one of our school psychologists and for the remainder of this school year. We are actually going to contract with the ESC. So what is listed in that um, section there is that short-term contract. Hope to fill that position internally for next year. There a motion to approve item 6.1? Second. Any discussion? Yes. 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 Director of Construction. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. For your consideration this evening, I have a request for approval of the 2019-2020 Spring High School Program Assessment. Seven point one. Discussion. Yes. Anderson. 
Yes. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, for your consideration for approval are the change orders recommended for uh, Clear Creek uh, Custom Connect Custom Building. Motion to approve item eight point one. Discussion. Yes. Thank you. All right, then we begin to uh, board member reports, comments, questions. Uh, item 9.1 is approval to donate $1,000 uh, to Stemfest. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion. Steve? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Yes. First thing is, uh, we've gotten a quick update um, from Mr. Schrager about the cultural, culture and diversity. Cultural competency. Thank you, cultural competency. And I just appreciate what the administrators have already done with that and how it's already being implemented in some of the buildings. And it was just really exciting for me to see um, we've got a draft of policy. So that was really cool for me to have the, to have the time to dive into it. Yeah, but it was just really exciting to see what some of the buildings have already done with that. So that was um, and they've already left, but thank you for, I had additional questions of the program study, so I appreciate the time and just like a better understanding of that. And just encouraging people to come to the community meetings that um, the updates have gone out with those and um, if there is a date that can be made, there'll be one additional to let us know and there'll be one additional that we can um, get you to. It's important that we hear your voices and um, hopefully one of those times will work because it's really important that we hear everybody and I think that there's going to be good discussions at those meetings, so I'm excited to be there. Hopefully, you guys will be able to make it. That's it. Thank you. Um, just one thing, I appreciate you sending that um, article on LinkedIn about the rest conditions for those uh, students who have, who have uh, you know, taken jobs after high school or the rest of the day. So it's really, it's really, that's good. It's really, it's really, uh, Good article, and I think maybe somehow in conjunction what what the school in Virginia is recognized not only all the honor students and all the athletes, but they uh, they also have a platform to recognize students who have successfully uh, uh, applied for and gained a job, and their employers came as well as the students. So it was it was, it was really nice. I like to see it somehow incorporate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the last thing, uh, I was, I'm the uh, representative to the district parent council meeting and the, the visual uh, presentation that they did, you know, was really good. And I've seen it up at uh, OSBA also. Uh, they have to share, I believe, Scott, you can help me out with this, between the high school and junior high, there's, there's some things that they have to share between the schools, correct? Yes. And uh, from what I understand, you know, for it to become full, for each school to have its own, for the most part, uh, they're going to need eighty-five hundred dollars to to finish that off, correct? Yeah. You want to, I can, yeah. Go ahead. So they have um, they call them kits, and they're basically like these big tubs that have some of their virtual reality technology, which includes the goggles and the phones and the routers and those kind of things. And currently, right now, I believe they have five of them. <laughs> talking about is so there's virtual reality and then now there's augmented oh, virtual reality right. which is kind of in a simple term it'd be if you have an object you can see all the way around it you can see underneath it over top of it um, that technology is within the phones that they use and that's a little more so that's was part of their plan of like where they wanted to take it uh, from there but yeah they would need one more kit uh, for each building to have their own yeah. uh, I'd like us to take a Board budget to help them out there and get what they need. So maybe next uh, next board meeting, 
Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> With what they brought to board meetings before, is that the yeah, augmented so. one, or was that the straight on? I'm pretty. It was the straight on. Right. I don't think they brought the augmented here before. Do we have right. the, is that what they brought to OSBA? They have it. It's yeah. It's in the phones. The the newest phones that they have. Not all of them. Isn't it just at one building? Correct. Right now. Yeah. Right. So, so it was the 8500, would that give all the buildings the one? No. It no. Would, no. So, so talking about, so that each building would have the, so the high school and junior high. The, oh, the, yeah. the 8500 uh, that Mr. Stuckey mentioned is for, it, that's not the augmented. So right. So that's one gotcha. kit one more. what they currently have. Okay. 3D kit. Just to get the basic, what they brought here, that. Correct. Correct. That would include the tub, the phones, the goggles, the router for 8500. Right. The standard virtual reality. Right. The augmented they said was higher than that, but I don't believe they gave a number. It's, they did. It's more expensive. So right now, do we have like building sharing if? Correct. You do, You each, there's five buildings that have it and one that doesn't, and then they share. Oh yeah, no, I agree, that's something we definitely. Okay, yeah, thanks for letting us know that, I didn't realize that. I'm done. Okay, um, I'm just reiterating my uh, Part of one of the, the panels, uh, what that was earlier this year. Um, but yeah, they just think it's a great program and uh, great skills for them to be learning. And really appreciated the uh, presentation from them this evening. Uh, also wanted to extend my uh, congratulations to Mrs. Coulter. Uh, we'll be sending one your way next year. So <laughs> my apologies. Um, <laughs> um, and then just thank you again to uh, to all of the, the folks that donated. A lot of a lot of generous donations. Any announcements, future considerations? All right, uh, item 10.1 uh, executive session to consider the appointment and employment dismissal discipline promotion, the promotion or compensation of a public employee or official. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Discussion. I guess I would just, since this is the first one of these that I've been doing. Uh, First exec session uh, as president, just a, a good reminder for all of us uh, anybody that's participating in the executive session that conversations that happen in executive session are required to remain confidential. Yes. Yes. All right, and there will be no action following the executive session. Thank you. 